Well, we're now getting a closer look at the extent of the damage after a deadly explosion rocked this neighborhood in Caledon yesterday morning. It was a blast that reduced what once was a home over there to this field of debris. Every inch of it covered. You can see chunks of wood and insulation back there, even a mattress and an air conditioner, just the remnants of the home that remain. It was a blast that even catapulted a chunk of wood up into the trees up here so you can see the sheer force of what happened here. Now, Joseph Westcott, the lone occupant of the home, was pronounced dead on scene. But tonight, we're learning more about the 54-year-old electrician who friends simply called Joe. Nearby neighbors who did not want to appear on camera described Joe as a nice man, someone they'd grab beers with once in a while. Another person we spoke to said she was good friends with Joe back in their 20s and 30s and described him as funny, smart, and kind-hearted. She says he was from Old Malton. He liked cars, snowmobiles, and skiing, and had lots of friends. I saw the flash, heard the boom, and the whole house shook. And the next instant, I was standing there thinking, did I just hear lightning strike? Did I... An earthquake, what was that? I looked out the window, but it was still and black. There's no fires, no nothing, no people. So I thought other people should be coming running out. Yeah. Uh, my kids came running in and they're like, what was that? The whole house moved, right? The explosion happened Sunday morning just after 6 o'clock. It's classified as a high-order explosion, meaning the blast pressure moved at over 1,000 meters per second, shattering objects in its path. This afternoon, nearby residents were still sweeping shards of glass from their front porches. Homes were seen with their windows blown out and doors crunched from the pressure. There's a blast pressure wave that goes out. That's the positive pressure. And then the negative phase that comes in. And that negative phase has a lot of power as well. It will pull the windows right out of those houses. That's why some of the houses we see the glass on the outside. That was the negative pressure that pulled them out. Felt it in your body when, when the explosion? Yeah, well, after the explosion, I felt that's why I thought it was a lightning strike because my skin, my arms felt just all tingly, you know, because of the. And I guess it was the repercussion of the blast coming into the house and going back out. About 12 to 15 nearby homes suffered damage with 30 to 35 residents displaced. Officials with the town of Caledon say they're doing everything they can to support those families, but it may be months before some of them are allowed to return home. And as you can imagine, yesterday was, was uh, you know, a, a very horrific day for them. Uh, not only did they... Uh, uh, lose one of their neighbors and, and our, our, our hearts and, and thoughts go to the family members of, of the deceased individual. Uh, you know, we're also having our thoughts uh, up for the residents of the street. Um, you know, this is a complete, uh, you know, life altering experience for them over the, over the last couple of, uh, couple of days. Now you can see uh, this is very much still an active investigation. Fire officials now carefully digging through uh, the debris and the rubble here, even using rakes to dig through the snow there to uh, determine. Uh, it's all part of the investigation. And actually, the Ontario Fire Marshal uh, will be on scene here for at least the next two to three days. Um, they earlier today utilized a drone to survey the area and get a better idea of the uh, total blast radius. Now, as the investigation continues, what they're looking for is anything that involves the fuel delivery service to the home. So hot water tanks, furnaces, barbecues, but it could be at least a month or more before a cause is determined.